Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So as I'm sure the majority of you guys know by now, as it is a very frequent topic on this channel, I love ships. I love shipping things and the media that I consume. I just can't get enough of it. I love the community that it creates. It's a lot of fun. And just like as a hopeless romantic, it's obvious that like the romance plot lines are the ones that I'm going to be drawn to the most in the shows and movies that I'm watching, which just makes me that much more invested in the ships and the whole shipping aspect of it. And while I have done videos before in the past on all of the toxic ships from Disney Channel, what we haven't talked about before is the ships that just really make me uncomfortable, the ones that just give me the ick, if you will. And so that is what we're going to be talking about today. And so we have two categories of ships that we're going to be going over today. First, we have the canon ones, which means that they were an actual thing in the series, or for the sake of this video, they were at least hinted at in the series. And then we have the non-canon ships, which means they were not a thing in the show or movie, and yet fans still seem to ship them anyways, which usually I'm all for a good non-canon ship. But for the sake of this video, you guys will see why all of these are just like big no-goes for me. Um, but yeah, we're gonna talk about that when we get there. First though, I got a very exciting package in the mail recently that I've just been dying to open from today's sponsor, which is Casetify. Let's unbox this and talk about them. And yeah, I'm excited. So yeah, this is what it came in. What a fun box. We love to see it. Um, this is also all the packaging, like 100% recycled paper, which we love to see. Also the ink in here is like used from soybeans. It's like soy ink, which I think is really cool. Obviously you guys know I love anything with soy in the title and so that just gets me excited. Oh, and also their impact and ultra impact cases are made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials, which we just, we love to see. Okay, so the first one I picked was this one, which I think you guys can probably guess why I chose this one. Yes, it's because of the moons. Yes, I love soy luna. And yes, I make my whole identity based off of that. And then the other design I chose was this one with the flowers because I liked the flowers flowers and I thought that it was pretty, which honestly, I was right. Okay, then we have the customized ones, which I was honestly the most excited to make because they had so many options. You could choose from their curated selection or customize it yourself with your favorite font or design layout. And so that's what I did. First, I've got this one, which says Valiente on it, which as I'm sure some of you guys know, it is a song from my favorite show, Soy Luna. And so I just thought that that was a fun little way to like show off my fandom, but also like have it still be personalized to me because Valiente is a song all about being brave. And yeah, that's a fun little quote, I guess, that uh, that I like to live by. So that's that. And then I got this one, <laughs> which said, oh, dropping things, um, which says teeny, teeny, teeny on it, which I'm sure you guys will understand that reference as well. Um, and also like all of these cases are also coded in Defensify, which is an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria. And they're also all non-hazardous and non-toxic, which is great. I'm also excited because all of these cases have drop protection of up to 9.8 feet, which I'll just have to test out. So here's a video of me doing so. And so yes, thank you so much to Casetify for all of these cases. I am just obsessed and in love. I actually wanna put one of them on right now. I don't even know why I'm questioning which one it's obviously going to be the Valiente one because I am Soy Luna trash. Also, any of these cases, great gift, especially the personalized ones because I feel like it just takes it a step further. And so if you want to check out Casetify, you can use my link, casetify.com slash Caitlin for 15% off your order, or you can click the link in the description down below. And so yes, thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for checking them out as it does really help out the channel a lot. And so yes, with all that being said, let's jump right into these ships. All right. So starting off with the Canon ships, we have seven to go over and I feel like they do get ickier as we go, but it's also hard because they all just are kind of on the same scale for me but nonetheless first up we've got Cece and Logan from Shake It Up. So starting off with their story arc we first meet Logan in season three and right off the bat him and Cece just do not get along whatsoever but then they find out that their parents are dating each other and then engage and so then they try to get along for their parents sake but it just fails miserably and then him and Rocky date for a bit but that ultimately ends when he won't put up with Cece for Rocky's sake and then that's the last we see of him for a bit or so we think because then we have the flash forward episode that takes place about 20 years into the future and we find out that him and Cece are now married. And so let's talk about why the idea of these two as a couple just makes me sick. And so first of all, they were literally going to be step siblings. Like even though the marriage didn't end up working out, that is just still something I can't get over. And I also personally just never saw any sort of romantic chemistry between the two of them. It was always hatred. Like there was no like underlying feelings there, like any good enemies to lovers had. It was just all just distaste for one another. And then what really gets me the most about them besides the whole sibling thing is that we never saw any sort of development. And so to put these two people together that like, 
as far as we know, hate one another, it just seems wrong because like I said, there were no underlying feelings that were hinted at or anything because we didn't see any sort of development. And like, I know that they did this probably because of like shock value, but I'm just like, I feel like it falls flat because it's just putting two people together that despise one another. And I'm just like, how does that make sense? Um, also, James was right there. I love CC and James and I'll fight for CC and James for the rest of my life. And I feel like he was the one who should have been her end game and putting her with Logan was honestly offensive to me and my favorite ship from that show. And so I rest my case. Those are my thoughts on CC and Logan. Now, I honestly just could not make this video without including these two, which is Zach and Maddie from The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. And in case you're not familiar, basically throughout the show, Zach has this like obsessive crush on Maddie, but she's never able to see him in that same light because of their age difference, which on the show is three years. But I think it's really important to note that in real life, that age difference is seven years. Ashley Tisdale is seven years older than Dylan Sprouse. Just let that sink in. Now, like I said, because of this age gap, she never saw him in a romantic way on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. But my issue comes with the spinoff series, The Sweet Life on Deck, because in her cameo episode of that show, her and Zack share a kiss, which I'm just like... Okay, that could have just been seen as like a throwaway kiss. She just does it to encourage him in the moment. But I'm also like, they still chose to show a kiss between these two characters, despite their giant age gap on and off screen. Now I'm gonna be honest, I have talked about these two in the past and I feel like I've kind of been on the fence about them, but that was mainly because I never actually went and Googled the actor's real life age gap. And now I'm just like, no, I can't get behind them. I just, no. It's so crazy for me too, to think about how popular of a ship these two are when we have Maya right there. Like, let's just let Zack and Maya be our true headcanon endgame and leave these two to rest. They are besties and nothing more. And so let's just leave it at that. Sound good? All right, cool, moving on. <laughs> Next, we just have to talk about Trish and Chuck from Austin and Allie, and I'm honestly surprised that we have not talked about them until now. So they were enemies by association throughout the series. Chuck was the rival to Trish's friend, Des, but there were moments throughout the show where Chuck would express interest in Trish and she would always respond with disgust towards him. They did go to prom together, but that was only so that Trish could use him to win the dance competition and then use the money to go visit her boyfriend, Jace. But then he ends up showing up and she's like, I'd rather be with him anyways. And then Chuck also ends up ditching her halfway through the dance so that he can be with his ex-girlfriend. And yet in the flash forward finale sequence, someone thought it would be a great idea to show Trish and Chuck as married and with a child. So these two make me nauseous in a way that I just feel like I don't even know how to express. I mean, obviously there is the comparison to Cece and Logan in the fact that they show them together in a flash forward sequence without any sort of romantic development happening. I mean, there is that one moment in the one episode where he makes a nice comment to her and she says that she's slightly less disgusted with him than usual, but like that's not nearly enough of a basis for me to like ship them off of, you know? And while Trish and Des do have somewhat of a complicated relationship, at the end of the day, they are still besties. And I just personally don't think she would ever look at Chuck in that way, especially when she spent the entirety of the series just like being repulsed by him. And then also you have Jace, he was right there and he was chill. And like, yes, I understand that he wasn't as much of a main character in the show as Chuck was. He was definitely more deserving of Trish than Chuck, so like, that's my end game and I will stand by that until I die. And so yes, that is Trish and Chuck from Austin and Allie. All right, so it's time to talk about Josh and Maya from Girl Meets World and I know that people do ship them. So I just want you guys to like hear me out before getting mad at me. Sound good? All right, cool. So in case you're not familiar with Girl Meets World, you basically have Maya and Riley, they're best friends. Josh is Riley's uncle and Maya has had a crush on him since before the show even began, but he will not give her the time of day because she is three years younger than him. Now that may not seem like that big of an age gap, but let me put it this way. In season one, Maya is 13 and Josh is 16, making her in seventh grade and him in 11th. That is weird. I don't care what you say. I still think that that is weird. And then even as the show went on in the last season, she was in ninth grade and he was in first year university. Like, could you imagine a university student being interested in a ninth grader? Like that just would not fly, at least not for me. I just can't picture it. All of that being said though, the show still continued to encourage their relationship. There's this one moment in season one where Josh gets turned down by someone who is also three years older than him. And they have this like weird sort of like bonding moment on the subway. Then we have this really weird episode where Maya is upset that she can't compete with these college girls that Josh is interested in and then she ends up confiding in these like random women that we've never seen before. We even get this speech from Maya where she goes on about how well she knows him which honestly just makes me cringe. And then the episode ends with Josh saying that she's not so little anymore and he needs to start seeing her differently and I'm like I think you missed the mark there bud but okay. And then we don't see him for another million years until he shows up for the ski lodge episode in the following season where we find out that he has taken up this hobby of observing people. And so according to Josh Maya only liked Lucas which is a 
a whole other situation, um, to protect Riley and test him out for herself, which just honestly makes no sense to me. And also, dude, where have you been? Like, you haven't been here throughout all of this. So like, where are your stakes in this situation? Because as far as I'm concerned, you don't have any. And so honestly, to me, it just sounds like he's using Maya's infatuation with him to his advantage and just manipulating her into believing this narrative that just makes no sense whatsoever. Then they go on to have an I like you moment and Josh agrees to play the long game with her, but then the show realizes if they want to have relationship drama with Maya, she can't be stuck in this weird long game situation with her best friend's uncle. And so then they bring Zay into the picture and hint at some sort of thing happening with him, which is honestly a moment that I love because I feel like Zay just perfectly like encompasses my thoughts and feelings towards the whole Josh Aya situation very well. So basically to wrap it up, I feel like their age gap was weird and Disney should not have entertained the idea of them. I don't like Josh and they also had no development. Like there's one moment in Ski Lodge where Maya is like, wow, we just had another great conversation. And I'm like, when have you previously had a good conversation? Was it the weird moment on the subway? Because I don't know what that was, but that was not a good conversation as far as I'm concerned. And it just bugs me when people are like, well, their age gap wasn't even that big because I'm like, it's not just the age gap that makes me uncomfortable with them. It's like everything about them that I don't like. And so yeah, that's why they're on this list. So this next ship, I'm actually not too sure if anyone actually does ship them, but if you do, then this is for you. Um, and so yeah, it's Nicole and David from Alex and Co. Basically, Nicole and David meet over the summer between season one and season two, and we find out that David is going to be the assistant chef for their cooking elective at their high school. And it's pretty clear from the start that David is interested in Nicole, even though she is in high school and has a boyfriend. They share a few really weird moments that Nicole just does not look comfortable in whatsoever, like the one where I think he calls her splendid or something. And then he ultimately tries to kiss her, but she turns him down because she is not interested, which she's made very clear, so I'm not really too sure why he thought that this was a good idea, but nonetheless, a photo gets taken of them while he's leaning in, making it look like they have kissed when they haven't, and basically all hell breaks loose. So they cancel the cooking class and fire David, rightfully so, but then the show ends up taking like this weird turn where they act like the class and the extracurricular is to blame for creating these like improper environments, and then Nicole's like, this isn't fair, and makes this whole like statement and protest with like everybody at the school kissing each other randomly, which ends up working, and then he ends up getting his job back, and I'm just like, what is going on? Uh, but thankfully, after she does turn David down, the plotline is ended from there and we don't see him in the rest of the season. So I feel like it's pretty obvious why this relationship makes me feel icky. Like, although their age gap is unknown, David just looks so much older than her and it just like makes me uncomfortable to watch these two together. And I honestly just don't understand why, like if they wanted to have this relationship drama, they didn't just use another student in that class or just like introduced a new kid instead. And even if there was no age gap between the two of them, he was still in a position of power over her while they were in that class together. And so I just don't understand why that was the plot line they decided to go with for a Disney Channel show. But there is also another ship from this show that also makes me nauseous that may be a bit more liked than Nicole and David, and that is Emma and Ray. Basically, they were introduced in the last season and they were dating at the same time that their parents were dating, which I feel like speaks for itself. Just like, no, don't do that, you know? Especially when like this ship was a replacement of an actual like main ship from the show. And so it's like, why did you do that? Just let Emma be single or just let her be in a long distance relationship with Christian. I don't understand why that was so hard for you to do, but nonetheless, I rest my case. That is all I have to say about Alex and Co. So I think we've all been waiting for the day where I could finally rant about Herman and Angie from Violetta and that day is today and I'm excited. So a little bit of a backstory first for those of you who may not be familiar with the show. Basically, it follows this girl named Violetta whose dad is very protective over her after the death of her mother. He cuts off ties from her mother's side of the family, he constantly has them moving around and forbids her from singing as her mom died in a tour bus accident. So a bit of backwards logic from her mom there, but the show had to have conflict somewhere and so that's what it was. So then we meet Angie at the start of the show who is Violetta's aunt on her mother's side who has never been able to have a relationship with Violetta because of her dad's overprotectiveness. And so Angie has just found out that they have moved and are now living like right near her. And so she's like, this is my chance to now be a part of her life. And so she shows up at their house, how she got their exact address is beyond me, but I guess that's not the point. She shows up and nobody recognizes her. So out of the fear that if Herman knew the truth, he would take Violetta away from her again, she decides to pretend to be her tutor and then sparks begin to fly between the two of them. As in between her and Herman, not her and Violetta. That would be even worse. However, Herman is engaged to someone else and also Angie is, well, keeping it a secret that she is his dead wife's sister. So it's a bit of a mess. So the season goes on with many will they won't they moments, including this one moment where he pretends to pass out in the hopes that she'll kiss him. Or this other time where they're in the car and he like leans in to kiss her and she's like, what are you doing? There was also this weird 
time during the second season where Herman was going through his, like, Hannah Montana story arc, and they would have, like, these really weird flirtatious interactions that just made me uncomfortable. But the show goes on with many more will-they-won't-they -they moments and two more engagements on Herman's end until they ultimately get engaged and married in the very last episode of the series. So obviously there is the whole questionable incest thing. She is the sister of his dead wife. However, I have gotten comments in the past that someone marrying their sibling-in-law after their spouse dies is actually a lot more common than I would think. However, I'm not too sure if that makes me any more comfortable with that whole situation. Like, just think about it from Violetta's perspective. Like, her aunt is also her stepmom. I don't like that. Now, although the show has over 200 episodes, there was still just such a lack of development between these two. They never actually dated, which means we never actually got to see how they would work together in a romantic relationship. And they also just had such better alternatives throughout the series. Like, I honestly really liked Angie and Pablo. They were such a great friends to lovers. And I also just really liked Esmeralda. I thought it could have been really interesting if they brought her back and gave her a redemption arc. I could have definitely got behind that instead of this, like, weird, questionable, incest situation. And while we're on the topic of Violetta, I just feel like I have to give a shout out to Maxi and Mara, which was this really weird story arc that lasted about five episodes in the first season. Basically, Maxi has a crush on this girl and then he finds out that she's his cousin, but he still like can't stop himself from liking her. But then we later come to find out that she's not actually related to him by blood. Like she's the daughter of his uncle's, I think, first marriage, not like the aunt that's related to him. But she still ends up shutting him down because she's like, I cannot be interested in somebody who would be interested in a family member. Um, which is like, preach girlfriend, I could not agree more. So yeah, Violetta is a wild ride, but I highly recommend it. Like, even with all its weirdness, that's just part of what makes it a great telenovela. All right, so at the top of the canon list, the ship that makes me want to gag the most is Marissa and Brady from Casey Undercover. So their story arc happened throughout the last season of the show. Basically, Marissa wants to join the organization, but Casey doesn't think it's the right fit for her, and so that's when Brady comes along. He's able to trick Marissa into thinking that she's joined the organization when really he's just been using her to get information about Casey for the alternate, which is the bad guys. Then he forces Marissa into having a fake relationship with him even though she said she was not interested, pretends that he's fallen in love with her as an attempt to get her not to figure out that he's the bad guy, tries to recruit her for the alternate but when she says no he kidnaps her, threatens her with an audio recording saying that if she tells anybody about this that she'll go to prison with him, kidnaps her again at gunpoint, I mean this time it was actually Casey pretending to be Marissa but he didn't know that, calls her a vacuumless dullard and then holds her and Casey at gunpoint encouraging them to fall off the roof to their death. So to put it lightly, this guy is literal scum and makes me sick and for some strange reason the show still decided to make him end game. He's able to escape after he tried to murder them and then we don't see him for a while But then he comes back near the end of the series as a part of the organization And then they rekindle their relationship and yeah, they end up together And so the show just like expects us to accept the fact that he's changed and is a good guy now And we haven't seen any of that process. He got no redemption arc whatsoever And as far as I'm concerned, I don't really think he showed any remorse for his previous actions And the show tries to act like him and Marissa had something before when they didn't it was all fake So like why would I believe it now especially when it is so rushed and call me crazy But I just feel like Marissa deserved so much better than someone who kidnapped her twice, treated her like an object, and also, oh yeah, tried to murder her. Also, do you guys remember that guy from the food bank? Like, what happened to him? He was so nice. And this is the end game that Marissa gets? Like, I feel like it's just so unfair. Also, the dude kind of sounded like Spencer Walsh from Good Luck Charlie when he talked, which is just like a huge red flag for me. And so yeah, I hate this ship with a passion. It makes me want to vomit. Um, I feel like this one is even worse than some of the non-canon ships, which is saying a lot. But now that we've talked about all of the canon ones, let's move on to the really wacky ones with the non-canon category. All right, so sometimes even when Disney does not intend for things to get shipped, they get shipped anyways. We've got five ships to go over. Again, they're ranked from like least to most icky, but honestly, they're all bad. Before we jump into this section though, I feel like I have to give a shout out at the beginning to Casey and Derek because like theoretically, Yes, they should be on here. They are step siblings. I should not ship them together, but for some reason I still do, even though I know it's wrong and they don't make me feel icky. So I just, I can't include them because that would be a lie. And I don't lie to you guys. It's bad business. It's bad for your soul. And so yeah, that's how I feel about that. Let's jump right into the first show I wanted to talk about, which is Phineas and Ferb. And I honestly just feel like these ships speak for themselves. And so I'm just going to list them. So first of all, pair the platypus with anybody. Doofenshmirtz, Candace, Phineas, Ferb. No, he is a platypus. Let's stop shipping him with people. That'd be great. The only one I can kind of understand is like a bro TP with him and Doofenshmirtz because I do really admire their relationship together, but I can still enjoy their relationship without like making it a weird romantic thing. And so that's how I feel about that. And then of course you have any of the siblings, Phineas and Ferb, Candace and Ferb, Candace and Phineas. No, they're siblings. Like, yes, I understand that Ferb was adopted, but they still grew up together and were raised 
as siblings. I don't like it. It makes me want to vomit. Moving on to Kim Possible, we have Kim and Shigo. Now, this is another one that I have expressed interest in in the past, and I would just like to take the time now to take all of that back. Whatever I said in support of this ship back in 2018 is wrong, and I disagree with it today. I was young and naive. I mean, I know it was only like four years ago, but like, to me, I'm like, wow, I was like, what, 18, 17 at the time? That, I was so young. She was so young and naive. She did not know. I know now, and I know that it's wrong. Honestly, the age gap between these two characters is just too big to ignore. While yes, Shigo's age is unknown in the series, she's likely in like her 30s or 40s, while Kim is a minor in high school, and that's just like wrong on so many levels. And I understand why I was all for it in the past. Like, I love a good enemies to lovers situation. I love a good foil character situation, but honestly, not everything needs to be seen as romantically. I've learned that now, and these two should not be shipped. And so that's how I feel about that. Now let's talk about Gravity Falls because the animated series are taking over this section of the list. So first of all, Mabel and Dipper. No, they're siblings. We don't need to ship that. Why can't we just have a healthy sibling relationship without people seeing it romantically? I don't know, but I don't like it. Next we have Mabel or Dipper with Bill, which just no. Bill is a demon who caused havoc on them and everyone they know and love. I don't understand why this is a popular ship and I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. When I was watching the show, I just couldn't fathom or understand the fact that people do ship Bill with either of the twins because it just screams toxicity to me and I see no like romantic undertones anywhere in any of the plot lines. Um, but yeah, that's just how I personally saw that situation. And so that is why it's on this list because I personally find it gross. So when I was doing research for this video and searching for ships from Wizards of Waverly Place, for some reason, it kept coming up that Alex and Justin were the number one ship from the show despite the incest. And I was just like, says who? <laughs> like who claims Alex and Justin as a number one ship? Because I sure don't. And like I've been running a YouTube channel about Disney for the past like what six years now and I cannot say I've ever received any comments and I do read the comments that says that they ship Alex and Justin. So I just have to say like no I don't think that's true but like I guess maybe people ship them. None, none that I've heard and I've been in this community for for quite a long time And I guess I can see why people would ship them because they do have great chemistry and they have a great dynamic with one another But it's a great dynamic as siblings because they are brother and sister And I just like I really don't understand this one Especially when they both were given such great end games on the show like there is no need to put them together like no nah. And that's why this one just had to be at the top of the top of this list Well, actually, it's not there's one that's even worse, but like this one is so bad. I just can't even fathom it all right, so at the top of the top, the ick of the ick, we've got Mal and Hades from Descendants. This one speaks for itself. Father, daughter, they are related. They should not be shipped. The fact that fan fiction exists for these two just makes me uncomfortable and I don't want to even think about it and I'm sorry that I'm putting this idea in your head. I understand that they had some weird moments in the movie like Mal was like oddly touchy with him and like her body language around him kind of made me uncomfortable but like I actively choose to ignore that fact. To be fair though I don't actually think there are that many people that do ship them and I just really hope that this video doesn't give anybody any ideas. Um, but if we're talking about Icky I just feel like this one takes the crown. I honestly don't think that any ship could get worse than this one. Anyways my point of this video is honestly who knows at this point no I do know my point of this video is sometimes things don't need to be shipped even if you are creating an AU or bridging the age gap how about you instead find what it is you like about that ship theoretically and find that in a better one is it the enemies to lovers aspect is it the forbidden lovers aspect guess what I've got videos about Disney Channel ships that cover both of those topics and both of those videos include zero incest also as far as the canon ships are concerned sometimes characters don't need a romantic plot or a rush end game like just let the character be happy and single like like, what does the media have against single people? I do not know, but I would like to see that change as well moving forward, but I don't know how much of a say I have. So I'm just gonna keep speaking on my little channel and hope that maybe change will happen one day. But I wanna know which ship made you wanna vomit the most after watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, Kater Tots, that is all for today. Hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Also, I got a haircut. In case you didn't notice till now, I chopped my hair off and I really like it. So don't forget to let me know in the comments down below how much better it is than it was before. All right, cool. Thanks. Bye guys.